everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Performance Cafe. So uh, we are on the next episode around self-leadership. And what we've spoken about in the past is what is self-leadership? How does it work for us? How is it advantageous? Then we spoke about self-awareness and, you know, who are you within this process of self-leadership? Um, and today we're going to step onto the next into the onto the next section. We're really talking about, uh, you know, what are your expectations from life? Because that is also related to self-awareness. I know what I want from life because I know who I am, but it will also help me understand in which direction to self-lead. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, it's quite quite easy. I, I decided as a young person that's what I want to do. But I think we must understand and acknowledge that there's a little bit of a component of a moving target here because circumstances change. People come into and out of our lives. Our life phases change. You know, we're very different in our 20s when we're busy building a career to our 40s or maybe even 50s where we start to take a look at, okay, hold on, what do I want to do in the second half of my life? And, you know, how do I want to, how do I want to live, live my life and, and what are the experience I, what the experiences that I want? And also, I think the other thing is that somehow the word happiness, because, I mean, that's what we're leading to, right? We want to have a happy life. What does that mean? Is it a life of fulfillment, of gratitude, of meaning? Is it a life filled with experiences, possessions? Um, you know, what are we going to do? What, what does it mean for us to be happy? And so I think for me, once we understand that those two things can sort of morph the whole time, we can understand how we can play with this concept, but that it's always going to be changing as well. And it's going to be kind of dynamic. So when we spoke about self-knowledge, we had questions like, what am I feeling and why? Why is that important to me? But now we want to go to the next step and we want to say, right, I understand why certain things are important to me, but what's my purpose? What do I actually want to direct this at? How does that currently play out in my life? And how do I want that to look in the future? The other thing, of course, is if I see that vision, I want to set up goals to get there. And the question is not only what is that success, that happiness, whatever it is, but also, what does it look like? How do I measure it? And what are the goals? What are the things that I need to do to keep moving constantly in that direction? And how will I measure when I'm there? How will I know when I've achieved a certain piece? How will I know when I've not achieved a certain piece so that I can fix that, go and relook look whether it's a necessity, all that kind of things, right? The kind of things that we would be having a discussion with others with that we were helping uh, to lead. So how do we do this? Well, there are a couple of ways, some of them more interesting than others. All of us as coaches at some point in time have used the Wheel of Life. It's basically a wheel. You can go and Google the graphic on the internet or download it from our site. Um, we'll pop the link in into, uh, into the YouTube uh, description for you. And in that wheel of life, it asks, where are you right now with regard to things like your finances, your careers, your relationships, your personal development, um, all that kind of stuff. And then you rate yourself the first time around. And then it says, where do you want to be? And then you give a second rating and you basically have two spidergrams that are inside of each other. And the one when, you, when we take a look at the difference between those scores, let's say, for example, if I'm saying in my family life, it's very low, but I actually want it higher, then I know those areas with the biggest gaps are the ones that I maybe want to focus on more right now. That gives us an impression or tells us of where we are right now. One of the bigger challenges that we do have is that very often we don't know where we're going to want to be in 20, 30 or 40 years from now. We go, we all swell, I, I, I certainly say, I want to, as I age, remain healthy. What does that mean for my diet, my exercise, my personal development, my personal mastery? 
But you know, today is happening, today is real. So I forget about that. And it was actually quite a neat little trick that I learned from research, and I can't remember who, my apologies. What they did was they asked people to list their priorities and what they expect from their life. And then they took photos of these people and they aged them using AI. And they showed them to them again. And they said to them, right, what would this person want? And it's interesting the gap between what we think we want versus when we actually see ourselves at that age and the wake-up call that it is as to how to do this. One of the other ways of doing this, and it's an old technique, is to write your own obituary. Or what would you want to have on your headstone one day when you pass away? Now, it feels a really grim thing, but it is kind of like, especially on a headstone, there's, sent, there's place for one or two sentences, not a lot more. So the question we have to ask ourselves, who do I want to be known as? What's sort of the legacy that I want to leave? And I'm not talking about money and buildings. I'm talking about the way we made people feel, the impact we had on the world, that kind of thing. So you see, what we need to do is, in order to self-lead, we need to know what is important to us. And in order to know what is important to us, can we come back to that concept of presence and my purpose? And then how am I going to map getting there? So these are some of the ways that you can actually add motivation to those goals that you are pursuing. Once you've attained them, they will be the means to be happy, to be happy in that place that you were expecting, even if it does change, you know, from time to time. And this also includes identifying opportunities to live in line with your values across various life domains. Because yes, we're going to age, yes, people will come and go, but often we find that values are that stable thing that keep on bringing us back to who we really want to be and who, what we want to be known for. So as always, I hope that you've enjoyed the section, found it very thoughtful. Please go to our website, where we on performforward.com post all of these videos with a matching blog. And uh, yes, I look forward to seeing you at the next episode where we're going to talk about how are we going to actually take those goals and make them real. Next time at the Performance Cafe.